Good morning. I believe we're live now. So dear visitors, welcome to our live session on the human digital twin with Garmi, shaping the future of telemedicine. Thanks so much to Munich, A Munich I AI Society, the high-tech platform initiated by Messe München and the MSRM of TUM for this opportunity to present our work. So over the next 20 minutes or so, you'll get a brief look into some exciting cutting edge work that we're doing here at the TUM MSRM in the area of telemedicine. I'd like to take a brief moment to introduce you to the team presenting this work. My name is Elizabeth Jensen and my colleague Luis Figueredo and I will begin by giving you a brief presentation regarding the motivation and innovation of our telemedicine concept. After this, we'll hand over to our colleagues in the other room um, who will show you a live demo of the system in action. Those colleagues are Jaleel Nasseri, Mario Trubinger, Ting Li Hu, and Andre Kostinescu. Paul Thiel and Dr. Günther Steinerbach will also be available for answering questions. Um, so as I said, we'll save a bit of time at the end for questions and answers, and please just go ahead and post your questions into the chat room throughout this session, and we'll do our best to respond to them at the end, as time allows. Hello, everyone. Welcome. So uh, this work has been performed under Geotronics, and we want to acknowledge the project. So Geotronics is a big purpose uh, driven umbrella project that groups brilliant minds from industry and academia for a common goal, independence, mobility, and self-determination for the elderly for as long as possible. One of the big challenges in this mission is healthcare. Um, as the population gets older, their research shows that they need more health care and more attention. As you can see on the on your left uh, graph by age and the requirements for health attention. Um, and as the population grows older and we expect the population over 60 to reach up to 30 percent of the total population by 2050, these will put a lot of pressure on the already pressured health system. This situation, of course, has been exacerbated by the current uh, health crisis, which also puts pressure to protect our patients and doctors. And one solution for all this problem has been telemedicine. And telemedicine has also been a common solution to address one of the big challenges in healthcare, which the inequality of distribution of clinics and hospitals and healthcare along the areas, along big health hubs, and rurals and areas outside these big health centers, where it's really hard to find uh, the same quality of experts and specialists as you would find these big health hubs. And one solution for this is the design of novel telemedicine solutions. So within these telemedicine solutions, though, we face additional challenges, and that is, and how do we achieve the same standard of care with telemedicine that we can with an in-person doctor visit? So we're focusing here on the example of an orthopedic medicine uh, visit um, and walking you through the different steps. Um, so the first step of this interaction is the doctor performing the anamnesis, so asking the patient questions about the history, about the pain. In this case, the patient has shoulder pain. Then the doctor performs passive behavior tests. So um, here he's asking the patient to move his arm through different ranges of motion. And this allows him to determine what diagnostic tests he needs to do in the next step, which is the physical examination. Um, so here he's moving the patient's arm through different ranges of motion, and he may also need to perform some palpation. Uh, so this physical examination is really, really critical for this, uh, this patient doctor interaction. And that part is not possible with current telemedicine approaches that have basic audiovisual interaction tools. So just to summarize, um, going back over the, these different steps, uh, we can define basically six steps for this type of a, of a doctor patient interaction, the anamnesis and the passive behavior tests, which are both possible through um, visual audio communication tools. Then the doctor performs, needs to be able to detect anomalies uh, in order to uh, uh, inform the physical examination process in the next step. And that requires this physical interaction between patient and doctor. Then the diagnosis comes. And in the final step, we also have intervention, which also requires physical interaction between either patient or a therapist, uh, pa patient and a doctor or a patient and a therapist. So what is our approach to this? Well, the 
audiovisual communication layer is really, really critical as a base layer um, to allow transparent communication between doctor and patient. That part is clear. But what we would like to add in is a transparent haptic layer at all as well in order to enable the physical interaction between patient and doctor. So we do this by introducing a dual twin setup, um, which basically means that we have a robot that represents the doctor interacting with the patient and a robot that represents the patient interacting with the doctor. And through this tool, then we were able to enable transparent haptic or physical interaction. In addition to this, we take advantage of the fact that the robot can also serve as a sensor. Um, and that sensor information, for example, the forces, can be used in combination with a model of the human, what we call the human digital twin, in order to uh, provide additional information to the doctor, for example, on muscle forces. And I'll talk about this a little bit more later. And uh, to achieve this vision presented by Elizabeth, uh, we need, of course, a robot uh, that can bring this novel paradigm into light, uh, but not any robot. For this, we designed Garmin. Garmin is the first use-driven humanoid uh, built on the three big pillars, communication, activities of daily living, and health, particularly communication with friends and families, and the capability of whole body control and full compliance and full sensing uh, and efficient skills to interact, sorry, to interact with uh, the external world in a more natural way and its surroundings. And of course, healthcare, which is the topic of the current, uh, of the current work. With this design in mind, uh, we have this incredible humanoid that is capable of proper and fluid interaction with uh, its health, the person, and the environment. For instance, it is capable of its using, exploring its outdoor localization skills to focus on different people and interact in a more natural way. Um, similarly, um, it can also uh, listen to someone calling and asking to open a door while exploring this by many skills to open this heavy door that you see. Um, it can also be taught different skills and execute them uh, autonomously or simultaneously, like uh, getting and placing a tray or a basket with medicine or equipment or anything, depending on the way you wanted to do it. And exploring its incredible sensing skills we can make it uh, any part of the body, uh, an applicable device that is an input for this teaching skills. So it can learn uh, either by kinesthetic teaching by the hands or the, or the head or any parts of the body uh, in a way that enables it to learn so many different tasks that can be really tailored for the user and for specific applications. And in our case, of course, uh, we want to show applications related to the healthcare and we will present more details during the live demo. So the other piece that's critical for enabling this vision that we have is the human digital twin, where we want to use, which we want to use for real-time monitoring of the internal state of the human. And this concept is really taken or inspired from industry, which has been using for decades now digital twins of, uh, of entire systems. Um, and essentially the concept is that you have sensors on your systems and um, additionally a model of your system. And the combination of the sensory information and the model allows you to quantify um, various parameters that you can't directly measure with sensors. And this is basically also what we want to do with humans. So starting with the musculoskeletal model. Um, here, what we've basically done is we've taken, we've um, developed physics informed models and we use a novel inverse, a novel approach to solving the inverse dynamics problem so that we're able to do this in real time. And this allows us to then in real time using measurements of force and position and velocity, we're able to in real time uh, estimate the muscle forces of uh, the individual human. So to summarize, I want you to recall the six steps of the standard orthopedic visit shown before. With our framework, we can achieve all the six steps in the context of telemedicine with robotics aid. The connection of Garmin, Mookie, and the human digital twin is what brings this new paradigm into light. And now I invite you to the second room 
where Jalil, Mario, and Ray Ting Li and Paul will present the last step of the doctor vista, the fiscal uh, intervention, in this case, the telerehabilitation, which is the biggest challenge in this context. Thanks, Lewis. Thanks, Elizabeth, for uh, the presentation. And welcome, everyone, to our channel, to uh, our demo. And uh, today, we are going to show you GAMI in a telemedical uh, situation and example. So, GAMI is equipped with um, two arms to replicate the, 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 the doctor movement here in the patient side and also to uh, send forces and is equipped also with microphones and cameras for audio uh, visual communication. Now we will uh, hand over the mic to the doctor station to uh, kick off uh, this uh, thing. Hi, you all. And let me introduce Muki. Muki is a mechanical avatar of the patient's upper limb. So it senses the position, the doctor is doing the movement here, it senses the position and transmits it in real time to Garmi. Garmi, on the other side, represents the doctor. So it's the the twin of the doctor and is doing exactly the same movement and in addition to that so garmi is measuring the forces or sensing the forces and transmitting it also back to do the MOKI system and the doctor can feel now the forces um done by or the movement and the forces done by the patient and this is besides the all known or already known uh, audiovisual telemedicine systems, um, we added an haptic layer. So we can feel the forces between the two systems and can control the depth and the motion of the, sorry, of the human arm. And uh, yeah, and as you can see here, the human digital twin, we are using it as diagnostics too. So the doctor can see the muscles. The muscles are simplified uh, or yeah, represented by simplified model. You can see these red lines. And the higher the muscle activation, the thicker and the brighter the uh, the forces, uh, the, the muscles or the, the lines are getting. And yeah, let's show it. I'm doing first some passive movement. So I'm moving the arm passively of the patient. And here you can't really see any muscle activation because it's only guiding the hand of the page, uh, yeah, the arm of the patient. And now let's hand over to my colleague Andre, who is a patient, and he is doing now some activation. Hello, hello everyone. I am Andre, and um, I'll be playing the patient now. Uh, in this uh, interaction, I will ask now the doctor to feel my exerted force on the Garmi arms, and I will be performing a um, flexor motion. And you can see that I'm activating my flexor muscles. And you can also see that in the visualization that the upper parts of the muscles are uh, lighting up. And if I do an extension, as in, yeah, you can see that the lower part of the muscles um, are active and visualized in the human digital twin. This helps the doctor a lot in when um, diagnosing and uh, pinpointing which muscles are painful uh, for the patient in the examination. In addition to all these components, we have also using the onboard cameras on GAMI, but uh, the doctor is able to detect using the facial expression to detect any uh, pain anomalies on the face. As you can see with this red flashing screen on the uh, doctor uh, side. Of course, this is an example of telemedical uh, application. In the future, we aim to apply most uh, tasks in telemedicine uh, scenarios and with a very specific diagnosis scenarios. So thanks a lot for being in our channel. If you have any questions, please post in our channel. And now we hand the mic back to our colleagues, uh, Louis and Isabel. Hello. Um, thank you, guys. Um, we'll come now for some questions. And for that, I just wanted to highlight some of the common questions that we often receive. Um, I will direct this question, of course, to Elizabeth, which is the expert on human digital twin. And one of the biggest questions that we always receive when presenting uh, this, this demo in this context is the connection between the human digital twin and the pain detection. 
Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a great question. So one thing that's really nice about the, um, the pain detection is that we have a way to sort of digitalize the exact moment in which the patient experiences pain. So this is something that a doctor will typically pick up on. And in a physical interaction, it's very easy for the doctor to then identify the, the connection and the association between the pain and what's happening. Um, but essentially what we're able to do here is we're able to digitize that. So we know the exact moment when the pain occurs and we know the internal state of the human uh, when that pain occurs. Um, and that then allows us to, to sort of draw this connection. And in the, in, in the next step, we could, for example, use artificial intelligence uh, to help us uh, draw connections and then support the doctor in, in making some kind of a diagnosis. Yeah, so um, also I just wanna say, please feel free to add any questions that you have to the chat. We do have a few more minutes here where we're live before we go on to the next demo. Um, so we're very, we welcome any questions that you might have. Um, but I can ask another sort of common question that we get for you, Lewis. Um, and that is that, um, where where do we envision putting Muki and Garmi? Where would these robots be? Uh, how would we make this type of a telemedicine scenario sort of reachable or attainable for everyone? That's a great question. Uh, that connects also to the project, to the Geotronics project as a whole. Um, and basically the, the main idea is that we can have the, the Muki, which represents the avatar of the patient in different parts, uh, in different healthcare facilities and different places where experts in big health hubs, as we were saying, where they are, so they can always be interactive with patients and following up patients on the, their treatment as well. So it's not only for the case of the, 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 the first consultation and the establish of the telerehabilitation, but also examining the progression of the, the patient and seeing how their muscular uh, reaction and, and, and response changes along this therapy. And for Garmi, what we see is that Garmi can be located, for instance, in different localizations along the, the rural areas, along the centers outside the big health centers. And we also envision having Garmi in healthcare facilities and, and also uh, care facilities for the elderly. So they are always having this sort of adaptation. They are always having the care that they need because if they have that along the time, that would be much more beneficial for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we received one, one other question. Um, I will just read out live and, and, and we can share with everyone. So uh, have you got any data on how people perceive the robot? Do they trust it? Do they, do they trust it, for example? Um, I'll now give some opportunity for the guys in the other room to answer as well. So Jalil, Andre, Mario, uh, Ting Li, and, and Paul. Yeah, actually, that's a good question. Uh, uh, currently, we did the preliminary studies, but we are planning to do more studies for acceptance of uh, GAMI, where we uh, basically implement some scenarios for um, Garmin is doing some tasks, daily life tasks or telemedicine tasks, and we, we target some specific range of users. And with this one, we will run some specific questionnaires in order to evaluate the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the acceptance. So there, is, there are preliminary studies, but we plan to do more in these uh, directions for the acceptance of the Garmin. Uh, we did it, for instance, for the head, but we plan to do it more for uh, interaction involvement of uh, Garmin. I will also add on top of that that we have this connection with different partners, for instance, uh, Deutsche Museum, which does this incredible work connecting with nursing cares that they will also give this feedback to us. And this will, will be very important for us to tailor better the, 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 the perception and the reaction of the, the robots for that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah, wonderful. We're, thank you for the questions. So we have another question here. Um, is the robot allowed to move when it is holding the patient hand? If yes, is any safety policy employed? This is a really nice question. Um, does one of you guys in the other room want to take a stab at it? Sorry, just one quick interruption. You have one minute to answer the question. Just quickly, so the robot now doesn't move when it does uh, this kind of uh, rehabilitation scenarios. It, 
it, it depends, but for this, it doesn't move. Or only moving the, the arms with specific movements. And of course, we have we have we didn't fully implement, but we have also policy security scenarios. Of course, um, if uh, if something is happened, we have uh, to uh, lock down. And there are some emergency buttons that for manual interruption, and also we have some algorithmic ones for interrupting for any uh, any uh, risks that would endanger the both the patient and also the doctor during GAMI uh, MUKI interaction. Thank you. So I think that's a wrap. Thank you guys so much for joining and thank you for your questions. And please let us know if you have any questions through the, uh, any additional questions through the online platform will be available. And you, uh, I invite you also you to, to check our data trunks website as you have been saying. So if you want to see there will be more videos and research over there.